Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I told you I'd be back this week as promised and here it is, like I said in the last video, the old Smith & Wesson Model 19 357 Magnum. So I figured I'd give you guys a brief history about it. Like I said, it's always entertaining to kind of, kind of give you that back uh, story of where it, I guess, all began, if you will. So basically, the Model 19 was introduced in 1957, which is the K-frame. A lot of people don't know about that. So the K-frame is, it's smaller and lighter than the N-frame 357. Um, usually people know them as like the Smith & Wesson Model 27, for example. Um, there's also a stainless version of this pistol as well, which is the Smith & Wesson Model 66. It come out about 1971. And I remember my granddad uh, was super, 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 super uh, into that model as a matter of fact i think he owned multiple uh for example with this model 19 he has well this one including uh which is mine including his and my dad's this one makes the fourth one that we have so that right there just automatically shows you the um you know collectability and enjoyment of that model like i said i'm a colt guy nothing against smiths love smiths there's other revolvers out there like i said ruger's dan wesson's um even the, I love the Kimber K6. I think it's fantastic. Um, but basically, with that being said, a lot of you know that the 357 revolvers, you can down chamber to 38, uh, which is really, really nice. And basically, this model of pistol was, um, sorry, I'm under the weather. <laughs> but this pistol was basically run from 1957 to 1999. And then they stopped production on it. And in about 2018, they ramped it up again and um it's been going strong ever since like i said uh it's a double action six round cylinder with adjustable sights uh it's actually what's kind of interesting is is that there's the introduction was the original model 19 in 1957 and there's actually been multiple 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 ren renditions excuse me um from the Model 19-1, which came out in 1959. So basically, you change the extractor rod. Um, it was a right to left hand thread. So the whole thing with that was is each each couple of years, like I said, they would make every two to three years, give or take. Sometimes there was a bigger gap. There would be an adjustment. So like for example, Smith and Wesson Model 19-2. There's actually, I'm trying to remember, one, two, three. There's at least four, four or five uh, renditions of the Dash 2. And like I said, all it was doing was is some of the serial numbers, like I said, you're going up in serial numbers, barrel lengths changed. They may have, may have changed something about the cylinder or the finish or the grips, whatever the, you know, or even the internals, if you will. So... What's funny about this one is, is this is a, actually, this is a 19-5. So the 19-5, actually, it eliminated the cylinder counter bore and um, had a, instead of having that pinned barrel. And basically, it was a small, it was, I'm talking small change to this cylinder. I think it's like 1.62 inches, if that. Um, now this actually came out in 19, this model came out in 1982. So this being an 80s model, I definitely could, uh, see that come around here and let you guys see it a little bit better. Um, but at least it's in, this one's in absolutely immaculate condition. Um, that's just smooth as a whistle right there. I mean, I absolutely love it. And like I said, they're extremely, extremely accurate. Now, next time I'll show you guys the Colt Trooper Mark III, the North Carolina State Trooper one I have, um, which is also a 357. I kind of consider the that, I guess, the I, I would kind of put them neck and neck, and that's not a jab at any of the Colt snake guns. Um, at one point, my granddad and dad had all, all the snake guns, every single model of the originals, not the new production ones. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see that, prog you know, progression, if you will. Um, <laughs> but it's kind of, like I said, it's kind of neat. And to touch real quick, if I can find it, uh, when I go home, I'll show you guys the Model 66. Like I was talking about, there was a couple of renditions of it. Like I said, it came out in 1971. And then 
The final change was the 66-8, which was in 2014. So you're seeing, like I said, that progression. There's also the Model 68, which came out in 1977. So, like I said, definitely a lot of um, a lot of neat comparisons there, I guess. Um, some of the users of this pistol would include the West Virginia State Police, South Dakota. Uh, the South Dakota State Police actually used the chrome finish, from what I've been told. Uh, Connecticut State Police, they had the Model 66, which had the four-inch barrel. Um, the United States, actually, what's really neat is the United States, if you can find this with the seal stamp somewhere on the lower half here of the United States Border Patrol, they actually adopted these for a while, and I thought that was really... Um, Really, really interesting. The Immigration and Naturalization Service had them as well. Uh, for apparently, from what I've been told, the Salt Lake City Police Department actually had them. They originally had the Model 66 initially, and then um, they had the Smith & Wesson Model 59, which is a 9mm. I have one of those as well. I would love to do a video on that, which is awesome. Um, and the FBI actually, apparently some agents were carrying these in the 1986 FBI Miami shootout. Um, I mean, that's quite a bit of firepower. At least it's not a 44. I get it, but it's definitely a unique piece. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm glad I was able to share it with you guys today. Um, uh, now that I'm able, I'm in a spot where I'm able to go back to the range, either go out to my family's land or, um, you know, go to the range itself. Like I said, depends on some people's backstop is not very thick. So you know, I mean, <laughs> it, it just depends. So, uh, like I said, I was glad I was able to kind of share this with you. I know it's not a whole lot of information. I'd really like to put out even more, but like I said, I'm working on a limited time frame. Excuse me. Especially with the fact that, you know, I'm undergoing all these health issues. I have a neurological appointment on Wednesday. It's going to be like two and a half hours. So, fun times there. <laughs> fun times. Um, a neat little, one last little tidbit I forgot about actually that I thought was always interesting. Um, there also is, so remember I was talking about the different renditions of this pistol. So the Smith & Wesson 19-3, actually in about 1972, the French GIGN, for you all that don't know, the GIGN is just awesome. It's a French uh, elite police force. So they ordered about 500 of those and the serial numbers ranging from, it was Delta 639300 all the way 639800. That's what it was. Um, it's actually one of the rarest models. With that being the case, it says it has, you know, fixed sights and pinned and recessed. Uh, it has a three inch barrel, like I said, from what I remember reading. If I, that's right, it says that. Yes, okay. I'm, I'm drawing a blank today, but yeah, that's exactly what it says uh, when I was reading it not long ago, because like I said, I had to brush up on it. So seeing one of those on the U.S. market, awesome. Um, don't see them a lot. If I ever, I don't think I'll ever see one probably, but if I ever do, I'd, I, I'd have to snag it. I couldn't pass something like that up. So um, anyway, about that's all I've got for you guys today, really. Like I said, quick, simple video. Uh, just talking about this beautiful pistol. And as always, like, subscribe, comment, click the bell for notifications, leave a little um, comment down below. Just, you know, let me know what you think. I know these videos are not amazing until I can get a better mic and camera. I've been putting it off. I probably just need to pony up the money. Somebody said to just, oh, just get that Blue Yeti mic. I'm like, well, that, okay, fine. That might eliminate the mic problem. But in terms of camera, like I said, I use my phone. Um, it's okay. It's not amazing. I definitely would like some clarity, but I'm not going out here and dropping, you know, a couple of grand on a, on a really nice, nice camera. It's just not my thing. I'm not making money off this. I'm strictly just doing this out of passion. So, um, there's that, but that's all I got for you guys. So tune in for the next one. I'll probably try to release something either by the end of the week, weekend, give or take. Um, don't hold me to that. You know how the schedule is. So anyway, thank you guys for being loyal and I'll catch you in the next one. Take it easy.